The question is, how do you know when you're ready to be an entrepreneur? And the answer is, you're never ready to be an entrepreneur. You're never ready. Nothing's ever gonna be 100%. You really just have to dive in and get going. Hi guys, I'm Jacqueline Johnson, the founder of Create and Cultivate. And today I'm gonna teach you about what it takes to be an entrepreneur, tell you about how I got my dream job and show you what a day in my work life looks like. So come on in. So you wanna be an entrepreneur? Well, take a seat. I'm gonna tell you what it takes. The definition of an entrepreneur is having an idea and then taking that idea through fruition, whether that's starting a company, building a company, launching a company, or even having a company fail. I never thought I would be an entrepreneur. I grew up in a family of small business owners, so I was always around entrepreneurship, but for me personally, I thought I was gonna be working in corporate, corner office life, but things took a different course for me. As a young female entrepreneur, I wanted to create offline and online experiences for entrepreneurs to give them the tools, tips, and tricks they needed to go out and create and cultivate the business of their dreams. So step one of being an entrepreneur is finding what you're passionate about, but also finding what the market is missing. I like to say, start by starting, find that passion, and then go from there. It can be as simple as just talking about your idea in public and getting feedback around it. Starting to talk about it is the best way to get that momentum and movement towards your business idea. I think sometimes people overthink what it takes to launch a business and they want every single thing to be perfect before they hit go. But my advice is just get it up, 80% it, and get it out into the world and get all that feedback back and see what worked, what didn't, what sold, what isn't selling, and go from there and iterate your business along the way. Create and Cultivate is a great example of that. I started as a side project, never thought it was a business until someone literally sat me down and said, I think you need to take this seriously and I think this is a company. And all the light bulbs clicked and I said, oh my goodness, it is. I should be investing in myself and my own ideas and taking this way more seriously than I was. Taking your creativity seriously, taking your, what you might think is a small baby idea seriously is going to change the energy around your company and therefore will propel you into a space that you didn't even know existed. A large part of being an entrepreneur is spending time with your team. Today, I'm meeting with our director of content, Drea Sobieski. So Drea, what's the latest? Well, I wanted to give you an update of what we went over in our marketing meeting this morning. Building a team is so important when growing a business. There's that saying, you can go far alone, but you can go further together. And I think that's so, so, so true. When building a team, it's really important to think about what you like to do and what's missing from the company and who is going to come in and fill those holes. So I always like to say staff against your weakness. One of the questions I always ask during job interviews is tell me about a time there was a crazy fire at your old job and how did you fix it? And I think that question is really important because it shows how people operate under pressure and it shows how they get creative in solutions. It's really about presenting yourself in a unique and different light. You really have to be willing to take risks to get yourself in for that job interview. It is crucial as an entrepreneur or small business owner to know about your financials. My mom, who is an accountant, uh, always told me fall in love with the numbers. And I think that's so true. And while you might not be running the finances for your company forever, it's important to know when the cash is coming in and when the cash is going out. The number one question we get asked at Create and Cultivate is where do I get capital for my business? It feels really intimidating, but there are amazing ways to get cash for your business. The first of which is, investing in your own company. That's what I did with Create and Cultivate. I put my own money into the business to retain as much equity as possible in the company. And then there's opportunities like friends and family. You can go out to your network and get cash into your business that way. There's also angel investing. And the major difference between an angel investor and a venture capitalist is angel investors are investing out of the goodness of their heart. While they expect a return, they don't necessarily need one. Whereas venture capitalists expect a return on their investment. So there are a ton of ways to bring capital into your business. It just depends on the stage you're at, how much money you need, and what you plan on using that money for. A lot of my day is spent meeting with small business owners, usually over Zoom, to hear more about their businesses to see if I want to invest. Okay, Alexa, tell me about your business. As an entrepreneur, you are pitching nonstop. So you have to get really good at your pitch, which means being an expert in your field, knowing everything there is to know about your own business, but also your competitors, the landscape, and what's five miles down the road. Why are you the right person to start this company? 
When I was first starting as an entrepreneur, pitching was like a muscle I had to build up and get better at over time. The five things you need to know on a pitch are everything about your company, who you are, what you do, what you stand for, everything about your product, why it's amazing, why it stands out, and why they should wanna buy it. And thirdly, your competition. What are they doing? Why are they relevant? And where you see you can make even better strides than they can. And fourthly, who are you talking to? Who are you pitching? Who are you giving this pitch to? And what do you wanna get out of it? And fifthly is closing the deal. So ending the pitch with what you wanna get out of it, whether it's money, whether it's winning a client over, always end with a next step of what you wanna see from that pitch. Here's what I would advise you as a next step. I would put together a deck with all this information. I would secure at least two to three different clients, then come back to me and ask how much money you need and we can kind of devise a plan together. Does that sound good? So since the pandemic, we've all been working from home. Our company has actually gone completely remote. So I'm gonna show you guys my home office. Come with me. Especially these days, it's so important to have a home office space that lets you set boundaries from your personal and work life, whether that's a physical space or just time you spend in certain areas of your home. So I'm gonna show you guys what a typical day in my work life looks like. Come on. My day-to-day -day responsibilities change all the time, but for the most part, I'm working with Create and Cultivate on building out our next event, securing our next keynote talent, working on Work Party the podcast, interviewing amazing women, seeing pitches from small business owners on New Money Ventures, securing pitches, funding deals, and thinking about the next you know, big business that we maybe wanna create as a fund. For me personally, you have to have a lot of energy to be an entrepreneur. You could be spending your day taking meetings and then that night going to one of our big networking events at Create and Cultivate. Time management is crucial when you have a lot of different jobs and hustles or whatever it is that you're working on. I think for me personally, I am a calendar ninja. I have everything slotted up to 15 minutes. I even slot my personal time, whether that's to have lunch or walk the dog. The one trait entrepreneurs need to have is resiliency. The reality is, is business is hard. Being resilient is so crucial because every day ebbs and flows with things going really amazing and then really bad at the same time. So for me, the moment I learned I was resilient, I had moved to Los Angeles for a high powered job and was promptly let go, which was devastating both personally and professionally. But I really took that setback as a setup for my, my future life and used that really difficult time to build up my own resilience to then launch my first company. So I like to think of my journey as an entrepreneur as accidental. I started Create and Cultivate because I wanted to give women entrepreneurs and small business owners the tools, tips, and tricks they needed to create the business of their dreams. I thought maybe there would be 20 or something women that would care about this. Turns out there was a lot of women and now cut to Create and Cultivate hosts around a million women a year through our different events, sites, and social. I think the biggest challenge that a lot of female entrepreneurs or small business owners can relate to is being told no. You're gonna to be told no a thousand times throughout your career. People are not gonna believe in what you're building or your vision until you actually go out and do it. So I think building that resiliency as you keep hearing those no's is so crucial. And just know you're not alone in the no's. Everyone is getting them. You get better over time at recognizing the no's as just feedback points to your next yes. I think it's so important to be able to accept failure and then bounce back immediately from it.